How could a man of God once believe the word of God, once teach the word, taught the word of God, having a congregation underneath them, could be talking like this? And then intimidating you and I so much to the degree that we would see the wickedness of the character Yahweh in the Bible and deny it and say, no, no, he wasn't wicked. No, it really is our fault. It's us. It's us. No, it's not. Do you know how many people are on the brink of suicide or have committed suicide? because they battle within themselves, wondering why a loving God made them the way that they uh, that he did. But yet, uh, because of how they were taught, God, you in your own word condemned me and you made me this way. He's called an ex-pastor. One of the reasons he's an ex-pastor is because he no longer believes in Jesus. He believes the Bible is bogus. Actually, this man came out about, I'll say about seven or eight years ago that he claims he no longer believes in God, no longer believes in Jesus. And these videos go on viral. And there, this minister is talking about a number of things. I'm gonna let you hear what he says. And then we're gonna address in part what's happening here. I'm gonna tell you what's happening here. I'm not gonna get into the nature, the nitty gritty and the details of his argument. I'm gonna tell you what happened to this man. And I'm a minister. I'm gonna tell you what's going on here. So, um, and I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear from you. How could a man of God once believe the word of God, once teach the word, taught the word of God, having a congregation underneath them, could be talking like this? What warning could we take from this? What message is God telling us? Friends, a, a, a foolish man, he said, a, a, a wise man learn from the, from, the, from the failures of others. How does it go? But a foolish man learned from his own mistake. Let me pull that up for you. I want to make sure I get the quotation right, right? A wise man learn, learn from the mistakes of others. And I want to, I want to put the quote for you. Let me, let me get that for you on the creek. Yeah. Only a fool. There we go. There we go. Only a fool learns from his own mistake. But the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. I, I, I'm loving it. So here is the thing. We're going to try to be wise today to see if we could learn from the mistakes of others. We don't have to make a mistake to learn from our mistakes. We can look at other men's mistakes and say, okay, boy, I see what you did. I'll make sure I don't do that. <laughs> so let's be wise about the way we go addressing this. And again, this is no condemnation of the man. If anything, I will say we should be praying for him. If anything, I will say we should be praying for him. We can rebuke, chastise if we want to do that. We, should, we can correct him, biblically speaking. We can warn him, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, friends, we should be praying for men like this. We should be praying for men like this. Because the enemy is using him. All right, let's take a listen. Yes, I am angry. I'm angry because I lived a lie for 15 years and I believed it with all my heart. I separated myself from my family, friends. I moved, relocated, disassociated myself from everyone or anyone who was not saved. I believe that I could not be unequally yoked together with non-believers. So I turned my back on good people or people who needed me. But it was for the cross's sake, right? It was for the cross's sake. Rather than fearing men, I feared the one who can cast both soul and body in that some place called hell. I took hook, line, and sink of the false story of love called John 3.16. That's no message of love. That's a message of coercion. Twisting your arm behind your back is a message with the ultimate threat on the end of it. While it says, oh, if you believe, you'll get some cake. But if you don't, I'll burn you. Let me tell you something, every believer. Yeah, I'm mad because I care more about people than your God. It is just a book. It ain't real. The God of the Bible is the devil of the Bible. I don't say that to be mean. I say that because it's a fact. It ain't no such thing as a devil. I'm just using the terms that you're familiar with. It was the God of the Bible that drowned people. It was the God of the Bible that sent animals out of the woods to destroy children. It was the God of the Bible who chose to unalive all the firstborn in Egypt, even the slaves and even the firstborn of the cattle. It was the maniacal God of the Bible that did that. And then intimidating you and I so much to the degree that we would see the wickedness of the character Yahweh in the Bible and deny it and say, no, no, he wasn't wicked. No, it really is our fault. It's us. It's us. No, it's not. Do you know how many people 
are on the brink of suicide or have committed suicide because they battle within themselves, wondering why a loving God made them the way that they uh, that he did. But yet, uh, because of how they were taught, God, you in your own word condemned me and you made me this way. Do you know how many people are miserable and terrified of the monster in the closet? They can't live their life because they fear that this wicked beast is gonna destroy them because they won't find him while he's playing hide and seek. While there's no evidence that he even exists or if it's a he, it, she, they, them, we don't know. But keep in mind, this proverbial God is the one that created you and I this way. And then said, the writers rather, said in the book that he established the end from the beginning that none of this is done outside of his will. So here's what I wanna say. First of all, to all you beautiful people out there, ain't nothing wrong with you. You weren't born in no sin, shaped in no iniquity with some death sentence on you simply because you were born. If a programmer developed a piece of software that had a virus, we would think something was wrong with that developer if we saw them going crazy over the software and stomping it, jumping up and down, like say, you know, saying, what's wrong with you software? What's wrong with you? You're gonna burn for this. We would think that person was crazy. You see it now, right? You beautiful person who might be gay or whatever, ain't nothing wrong with you. You live your life and you're a beautiful person. It is the Abrahamic religion that makes us mistreat people. You're great people, you're wonderful people. We just simply believe the book and please forgive us, forgive me, because I was the same. I was the same, I was homophobic like many black men while having loved ones who were gay. How dare you? I will be damned and refuse to lift my hands up for any idea of any type of God that would make me in sin, whatever the hell that is, make me worthy of death. And then tell me if I don't find him in the midst of all of these claim fictitious ideas called gods, I'm going to burn for eternity. But let me tell you something. If you were real, I ain't nobody's sheep. I ain't nobody's slave. And I'm not scared of you or your idea. So if in fact that God was real, burn me. Because I'd rather be with the people, the real ones. I'll stand with them. Burn me. You want to burn me because I love more than you? That's what I would say. Do it. Because I ain't nobody's punk. And you ain't going to threaten me. And don't let nobody threaten you. For all of those that follow me, all my friends, I'm sorry. I'm sure you feel me, but I ain't sorry. And I don't know if I'm a... So at the end of the day, yes, Sean is mad. <sighs> wow. I didn't watch this video before the live stream, by the way. I purposely say I'm going to pause. I'm going to hear it with you guys here in honest perspective and i want to hear from you what you guys are thinking about this there was a lot a lot of things said here um i gotta get my get myself together after hearing something like that all right he's forgetting that he is forgetting that we are all born in into a sinful nature Mm -hmm. He is full of hate. That was hard. That was hard to hear. Mm -hmm. He said that he separated himself from others because they were too sinful. Thus, did God ever ask us to do exactly that? It's one thing we are with people that are influencing us to do evil, but we're never called to separate ourselves completely from people because they're sinful. That makes no sense because we are sinful. So there was a misconception of scripture here. I get it. Sometimes when you become a Christian, early in that Christian experience, you can be so zealous for the Lord and you think you can't hang out with anybody else. Um, listen, Jesus welcomed the publicans and the sinners and he ate with them. So I think as Christians, we should never be doing that. So I think that was a misconception coming from him. As you can tell, the man is very frustrated and, and I'm here and I'm not here to berate, to excoriate the man. To be honest with you guys, I feel sorry for him because I think 
the enemy really did something to the mind of this man. Whatever the devil did, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of him doing that to anybody else. To say the least, a minister. John 3.16 is a bad message. It's a message to twist your arm, to coerce you. Is that, is that true? I never heard that interpretation before. The Bible is just a book. Is it just a book? Is it inspired by God? Has God preserved the book? Were the men who wrote the book were led by the Holy Spirit? Um, so the Bible is no longer inspired according to him. Guys, this is not some men who never knew about Jesus that's talking here. Yeah. He's also, yeah, disregarding, discrediting free will. True. That hurts my soul with hard fit. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah, that's true, Darth Vader. Completely neglecting free will. But here's another thing. If you told me this was an atheist man who never read the Bible, I would say I understand. This used to be a minister. Guys, I want you to think about that. This used to be a man who once believed, taught, preached, walked in these words that are talking like this. What does this tell you? Um, a sinful man is condemning God. The God of the Bible is the devil. <sighs> um, there is nothing wrong with humanity. We just watched a video of Christian having been persecuted, 140 people gunned down in churches and different communities, but there's nothing wrong with us. There's, there's nothing wrong with us. <laughs> If you have any children, and I do, we have six beautiful children, four younger ones. And we're talking about under the age of seven. I can tell you something. There's something wrong with us. <laughs> if you hang around children, you don't teach them to lie. You don't teach them to curse. You don't teach them to twerk. You don't teach them to be disrespectful and mischievous. You don't teach them to do any of that. You hang around children long enough, you will realize there's something wrong with humanity. He said, wait a minute, where did you learn that from? I never taught you that. Why are you hiding? Why are you I'll tell you something, boy. <laughs> if you don't think there's something wrong with us, you really done lost your mind. The humanity and the software comparison, I want to say humanity is not a software. Like Darth Vader says, you cannot discredit free will. Softwares don't have free will. They don't have a conscience. Lord have mercy. And I agree, my friend. That is blasphemy. Blasphemy. Darth Vader's daughter, this was painful to listen to. Painful. Painful. I don't know how the Lord is going to reach this man, but I know God can. I don't know how the Lord will turn this man around, but I don't know. I know the Lord can. All people are wonderful, gay, lesbian, and strength, no matter how they live. Everybody is great. <laughs> that is not true. And I tell you, ultimately, I'm not here to rebuke the man. I, I feel sorry for the man because I'm a minister myself. This is why I'm sharing this video. What happened, my friend? That's all I'm asking. My friend, what done happened to you? How did you get in this condition? I can tell you, it could be several things that happened. Number one, unrepentant sin. Uh, so this possibly, and I, I'm, I'm being very serious, unrepentant, unrepentant sins and practices. So you probably, there's a number of things, a minister and also as a Christians, please pay close attention to what I'm telling you. 
Don't think because you know Jesus, you read your Bible, you can quote John 3, 16. You can, you can quote uh, you know, Psalm 23. You can say the Lord's Prayer. That means you're safe. Uh, friends, please, please pay attention. The devil is not playing. This game we think the enemy is playing when it comes to salvation, it's think it's a joke. This stuff is not a joke. You're looking at the face of a man who sometime in the past, we don't know, I'm just speculating, was probably indulging in some sin, some secret sin, some darling sin. God might have warned him, rebuked him, sent messages to him. He probably didn't listen. And I'm speculating, friends. I'm speculating. I'm, all I'm telling you from a biblical perspective, most time when a person turns away from God is because they have clave to a particular sin that that sin in itself became their God. So, I don't know. It could be a number of things. Sexual sins. It could be greed. It could be adultery. It could be a number of things. We don't necessarily know. We can only speculate. So that's one aspect of the message. Secondly, for a man to once leave God and talk like this, there's another thing you need to be aware of. It's called worldliness. Oh, I wish I could spend time on this. You see the world and everything that's in it? It has a way of talking our hearts away from the Lord. This is not to say you can't live in the world, but I'm telling you, be careful how much of this world, should I say, this worldly Kool-Aid you drink because we must be in the world. But as we are in the world, investing in the world, doing business in the world, watch it. Watch it. I, I, I'm so serious, friends, and I, I know what I'm telling you because what I say to you, I say to myself, we need to be careful. The world has a way of slowly pulling you away from Jesus. You don't read Bible anymore. You stop having morning devotional. Oh, you don't talk about Jesus to your friends anymore. You don't even let people know that you're a Christian. When you speak about the Lord, you, make, you barely make mention of his name. You talk about what God, you talk about everybody else, but Jesus. Watch it. That's, that, that's a sign of a man who's departing from his God. And I'll tell you something. A lot might have happened in a man's life. I don't really know. Another thing that could have happened is a traumatic experience. A man like this probably went through a series of trouble or trial or persecutions. And as a result of that, his faith crumbled. And I'm not saying this to make fun. Friends, there's some troubles you go through. There's some pains you go through. There's some anxiety and trauma, traumatic experience you go through. If you ain't careful, you can lose your faith. I want to pause here. Give this video a thumbs up. For those of you that are watching online right now, give this video a thumbs up. I got one last thing to share. Give this video a thumbs up and let's push this stuff into the algorithm. A man like this, one of the things that could have also happened, unbelief took the place of faith. It happened over time. It happened a little bit at a time. And, and, and it could be watching movies. It could be watching, listening to the wrong voices, experiences, this and that, death, persecution. It could be a number of things happening all at once that could cause it to happen. But again, the decision was his. We don't know when that decision was made. All we're simply doing is talking about the video. This minister, he needs our prayer. The man wanted to cry. He wanted to weep. You could tell his heart is heavy. Some of the stuff he's saying, I don't even think he believed them. I don't think he believes them. I think he's saying it because he's mad. And it's okay to be mad. If you're mad, at the, it's okay to be mad. But what you cannot do is blame God for everything that is wrong with your life. That's narcissistic and confusing. But I'll tell you what. I feel sorry for the man. I'm going to find his name, add him on my prayer list, and say, Lord, have mercy on him. Have mercy on him. But I'll tell you what. I got one more text to share with you. In Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 14, the Bible says, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. Mm. But exalt one another daily while it is called today, 
lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we become, for we've become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence, steadfast until the end. That gives me goosebumps. Guys, listen. The scripture says, beware. In other words, watch it. Lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. Why is he saying that? Because our heart has a way of slowly leading us away from the truth of God's word. This is a warning, not just to ministers, to every single Christian. You better be careful about the condition of your sinful heart. The enemy has a way of, 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 of pleasing our sinful nature. Before we know it, we are departing from the God, from the living God. Here's the other thing. Exhort one another daily. And I love this. And this is why I tell people, get in church. Get yourself some Christian friends. Because the journey is not meant for you to be alone. Why? Because you need to be exalted, my friends. You need a word from the Lord. You need to hear from other Christians to encourage you. I need you and you need me. I cannot, I'm not supposed to be a Christian all by myself. You understand that? There's times the enemy has a way of smacking us down and we fall flat on our backs. We're going to need somebody else to say, brother, get up. Exalt one another daily. Friends, if you're listening to me today, listen, don't be discouraged in that journey. Don't be discouraged even though your sinful heart sometimes pulls you away from God. Your sinful nature has a way of deceiving you. Do not be discouraged. Get back up. Maybe you've sinned last night. Maybe you said something, did something, and you look at yourself like you say, what a wretched human being that I am. Listen to me, friends. Get up. Get up. Stop wallowing in your past, in your sins, in what you did, did. Forget about what you did. Leave the past behind. Get up. The Bible says, why it is called today? Why? Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So the men got hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This is the scary reality, friends. So while you are in, that's why, friends, if you know a person who's a Christian, you better give them person a word as often as you can. If you know somebody who's a Christian, you better be praying for them. And even those that are not Christian, you better lift them up. But not only are we supposed to be doing that, listen to this. Listen, listen. We have become partakers of Christ. If we hold fast the beginning of our confidence, steadfast until the end. In other words, becoming a Christian is one thing, but remaining one, that's something else. So the Christian man who holds fast, what does that mean? Listen, friends. You, you can say I'm a Christian today. You can say I believe in Jesus today. You think the enemy is just going to turn his back and let it ride, friends? He's going to send trouble, pain, trials, enemies. Your friends and your families will turn against you in the hope of destroying your faith. And you're going to have to be bold enough to say, I will not let Jesus go. I don't care what the devil throws up my way. Friends, you're going to have to be bold to be saved in the last days. You're going to have to be strong in the Lord to be saved. If you think being a Christian, that's just it, think again. The enemy is coming like a flood. But praise God, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. You're going to have to learn what it means to pray, to wrestle, to repent, get on those knees, weep and cry, and get back on the road. Do not quit. That's all I'm saying. Let's get back to our live streams. Let me read your comments now. I'm done talking and shouting and <laughs> having a ranting session here. I just feel sorry for the man. I'm finding his name. Sean Towers, his name is. I'm finding the man's name. He's going on my prayer list. I'll tell you that much. The Lord can save him. He ain't too late. It is not too late for the Lord to reach the man. I never disqualify a man. Never disqualify a man.